So we've had a little look on what OBS looks like as far as interface goes, but let's start adding a few things to be able to actually do something. I'm going to start here from our default scene and we're going to add something. I'm going to add a basic image and we'll get into these individually, but for now I'm going to call this tutorial image. And now we can browse and I'll go to my Twitch and overlay backgrounds. I'm going to pick a background here. I've got a few photos I've taken and that's our background. That's 16 by nine right there. It fits and I can move it around how I want. So that's an image I can move. I can resize. It will clip or snap rather just a little bit. And I can expand however I want. So that's one. And to understand how basic transitions work, that's our scene. If I lock it here, I can't move it. I can select anything which is unlocked, but I can't move this because it's locked. And this I can hear is the visibility of the item. Now let's say I'll add a little text just so we'll check something out. So that's tutorial text. And the text says, this is a tutorial. We'll check these individually, but for now, put that here. And as you can see, that's right there. Because this is a studio mode, then we cannot see this in the program. This is not going out live. And we'll see how to do this. But let's finish these first. So test one, I'll add another image. I will call it tutorial image two. I can add the same one, so it will duplicate it and make source visible or invisible by default. Of course, we can change that later. That will take me to that folder. I'll pick this image right there, and I'll lock this as well. And now I have two scenes. If I want to move this to the other scene, all I need to do is right click. I have all these options here. I'll click copy. I can do two things. I'll paste a reference, which is the exact same thing. So that's a reference to that. That means that anything I change here, so let me put an exclamation mark there, that will change there. But if I say, for instance, I'll delete this from here. So I'll remove and yes, I'll accept that. I'll copy it again and I'll paste a duplicate of it. Then it calls it tutorial text too. So anything I change here applies only to that. So this still has its exclamation mark. This does not. They carry the same positioning, so if they're even if they're separate and I move this, I'll right click, transform, copy transform. And if I do it here, right click, or I could do it here as well, right click, transform, and then I have paste transform, it will take it to exactly the other's position. Now keep in mind that if you have a reference, it will only change its dimensions for that particular scene. So say you have one webcam, which is only one source, and you want it larger on another screen, you only need to create a reference. You don't need to create a duplicate file, a duplicate item, and then do that. That will add a lot of overhead. So the scene-specific sizing is in force there. You do not need to add another source and add a different size. So keep that in mind. Actually, I can show you that right now. So if I say I want to copy this, so copy. I'll delete this, so remove. And we'll paste a reference of this. I'll make this very big. Save like that. The other one didn't change because it is specific to that scene as far as sizing goes. So there's there. We have two separate scenes. We'll lock everything in place. And none of them right now is live because what we have live didn't change because that's how program works. So what we can do is transition into the live screen. So I press transition. There it is. We also have a setting here and I'll show you this as well. So I can now I can edit this. So even if I edit this same image, so this is the same scene. Let me edit it. As you can see, this didn't change. If I press transition again, that will change. Beautiful. By default, I have an option here which says swap preview and output scenes after transitioning. If I have that off and I have this, nothing changes, but say I want them to swap. I'll do this and I'll swap and they'll switch positions. 
We also have duplicate scene. It says here, which allows the editing on a separate screen and duplicate sources actually multiplies the sources as well. But this can be a bit tricky to do. So I wouldn't use this unless I have, as you can see, it didn't even like that happening. So let's open it again. It didn't even like that happening. So right now it even moved everything around for us. It moved a few things around. Let's get back to it. We can apply it like this anyway. See, it can happen with OBS, but at least... Actually, it didn't save most of the stuff. Move that there. Keep that here. As you can see, if I move it out of the screen, you can see the overflow right there. So, we have our two scenes, and we keep duplicate scene, no duplicate sources, and leave it like that. And we have our transition. Now, this is a fade transition happening, which is a fade there. I can cut as well. I can fade. I can have multiple of these. Transition will keep the last one used. So, it's important to note that this transition will store the, the last transition you've used from quick transitions. So, if I've done cut, this transition will be cut. If I've done fade, the transition will be fade. As far as fade goes and cut goes, you can add more from here actually so these are cut and fade i want to add another one so say i want swipe i'll call it swipe direction anyone i want i'll do left swipe in preview transition press ok and that should have become available here i'll add swipe i can swipe and of course it will apply there i can remove any of them so if i want to remove the cut I'll click remove if I want to remove the fade. And now all I have is swipe. But unless I click swipe the first time, it will still retain the same option there. I can also add a stinger if I wanted to, which would be a file. Right here, a video file. And there could be audio on it and I could monitor it. And there are extra things. We'll check out stingers individually. But these are pretty much the basics you will need to be able to operate your scenes. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave any queries you may have in the comment, and subscribe for more content. See you in the next one.